some of you may remember the original name of this channel was Fasting for Health because I got into, I was so at, at the start of my healing journey where I really got intensely with, uh, intensely into it. This is maybe six, seven years ago or something. I felt that fasting was really the only way that I could fix, fix all the issues. Um, so I completed a fair, fair bit of fasting. I had a fair bit of experience where, you know, I started with intermittent fasting, went to 24, 48. Eventually I did a 14 day water fast, did a five day dry fast. I was for years, you know, eating OMAD and doing alternate day fasting, just experimented with fasting for years. Ultimately nothing happened. I didn't fix anything. After the five day dry fast and also the 14 day water fast, it was, there was a couple of days there where things were better and then it just pretty much went back to what it was. And since then, in the years that have gone by, I've, things have gotten much worse to the point now that I'm, I'm very scared uh, about my gut and my health. So I recently, six, seven months ago, I contracted C. diff, an infection of the stomach. This is a very, very violent toxin. Um, it's one of those super bugs that are just res resistant to antibiotics. I spent thousands of dollars on doing FMT procedures and all put my health at risk using these crazy antibiotics that cause damage to my ears and, my, and body. <clears throat> so I found a channel called Fasting with Trevor and he does a lot of dry fasting, a lot. He's done 23 days, I think was his record. Or, and he does a few times a year, he does 20 day dry fasts. Well, he has a few, I think he's done it three or four times already this year. And what he says is that usually it's at around 14, 15 days that you start to see healing on a, on a dry fast, especially healing pretty serious things. So... I don't really have many options left at this point and I'm kind of getting desperate. I'm getting very scared. So my decision is to try to work myself up to a very long dry fast. <clears throat> my concerns are is that I can't put on weight. I think mainly because I can't eat carbs. It doesn't matter how much keto carnival foods that I eat, I, I cannot put on weight. And also when I start eating things like cheese and, and dairy and stuff like that, that are keto foods that can put on weight, I, I get quite ill. So I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But at this point, I, I just don't feel that I have a choice. I've been doing tons of research about preparing for it. And I know the last time I did a dry fast, the five day one, I did research, but there just wasn't as much out there at the time. And I didn't prepare myself properly. Um, the fasting with Trevor channel says that you have to really get your colon clean to make it easier, uh, really load up on potassium. And I didn't do any of that. I just went into it. And by the fourth day, fifth day, I thought I was going to die. So I did break it, but I made it. That was my goal. Five days. I did make it. Um, so yeah, I just, I'm going to read all the books, keep watching all the YouTube channels and really figure this out and start building it up. I'm going to, I'm started dry fasting uh, every day for about 16 to 18 hours per day. And this weekend I'm going to do a, a 40, 40 or more hour dry fast just to get myself back into it. And then every two weeks I'm going to start doing them and slowly build them up. Next week I'll do 48, 72 and then... From there, well, I think once I once I start getting up around 72, three, four, five days, I'll just go for a really big one, maybe 10 days or something like that. But he says that if there are things that can occur that, that you know, it's not about just willpower. It's not like a water fast where you can will yourself through it. There are very dangerous things that can happen during this and he says you should break it if your heart rate is above 110 for more than an hour. I think, well, he said more than 10 minutes, but I read somewhere else it was more than an hour. Or if you start to lose the ability to walk, if it's very difficult to walk or move, it means you're, you're probably going to die. So just things I have to watch out for. The things 
after I did my 14 day fast, I noticed that fasting affected me a lot different after that, where I used to sleep really well when I was fasting. But during the 14 day fast, that stopped happening. And now whenever I fast, my body just keeps me awake. I sleep a couple of hours a night, if that. And it's just a nightmare. It's so boring. But I understand that that's all you really need to do is heal. to heal is to be bored. But it is one of the most difficult components of fasting for me is, is just this, just the, the nothingness, the boredom, the lack of sleep because I can't stand not getting sleep. But at this point, I really don't feel I have many other options left to try to at least cure this C. diff. But fasting with Trevor was saying that he, he pretty much cured everything with it. So I'm hoping I can fix the, the IBS, the, the histamine intolerance, all that stuff. So it's just at this point about me gradually building up the hours and then eventually I'll do as long as possible. But of course, I'll keep you all updated on, on how it's going. Each fast, well, each significant fast that I do, um, I will give an update and let you know what happens. And I pray that that I can fix this stuff. And if, if I end up, if this ends up being the answer that fixes it, then I'm going to really dedicate the rest of my life to, to spreading this, this word. Just because I always said that if I can fix these health issues, then I need to share with others how I did it because it's been such a nightmare for me for so long. But anyway, guys, um, thank you for being there and, and we'll chat soon. Cheers.